Hi there, Mark here from Club365. This video I want to show you some really cool stuff that you can do to make your Teams meetings and the camera you share very very cool. So if you want to do things like share a video and have the video play seamlessly to your people in your meeting including the sound which is really really hard to do with Teams just out of the box you can do that and also if you can't wait for the Teams background customization to come in because it maybe hasn't rolled out to you yet then keep watching because I'm going to show you some cool stuff and if you ever want to do any uh, kind of quite cool events where you, perhaps you've got some green screen going on in the background and you want to see some get set some scenes going up because you want to do a professional presentation to your company then also keep listening because I'm going to show you a product called XSplit Broadcaster. Now XSplit Broadcaster is actually a tool that we've used at Club365 to do some of our live events. And in fact, what happened is we went to Microsoft and we did one of our conferences from there and we set up a massive green screen, chroma screen, uh, and then we invited all of the Microsoft speakers in and we set a whole setup and we made the whole thing look seamlessly from Microsoft. And that was all done, funnily enough, with a few cameras, some lights, a green screen and XSplit Broadcaster. There's a bit of background on XSplit Broadcaster. It's actually come from the, uh, I think it was built pretty much to support the gamers that like to stream their games live. So if you're like me and your children like to, uh, if you've got children and they like to play games, then a lot of them now are streaming to services like Twitch and they're doing it with uh, tools like XSplit Broadcaster. And what it does, it allows them to stream their game, i.e. Their, what's on their screen, up and people can chat on it. And then they can also speak with a headset on. And that's done with XSplit Broadcaster. So let me just show you what the final result is going to be, and then I'll get into XSplit Broadcaster. Right, so to set this up, because I've got two webcams above my monitor right now, and it gets really confusing if I want to record a Teams meeting and I want to share it. So what I've done is I've borrowed Helen's laptop here. Helen's not actually in the, on the call with me. She's just silent. It's all muted. But what I've done is I've had a meeting with Helen. So I'm in with Helen. And I've asked Helen to share her screen so she, you can see what's on my screen. In fact, if that makes sense. So th this bit in the middle here, with the scrolling words, is actually my virtual camera. Now, that's the camera I'm sharing. So normally you just see, in, in the old world, you'd see a picture of me. And then behind it, you'd see my normal background and it'd just be a normal webcam. Whereas what I've done is I've actually been able to create what's called a virtual webcam. And that's all done with XSplit. So I'll just show you a couple more things that you can do and before I get into XSplit. Right, so what you can do in XSplit, you've got, let me just maximize the screen so you can see it. You've got this concept of scene. So let's just see one more thing you can do. So there you go, I've just set the scene. So what's happening now is XSplit's controlling my virtual camera and what it'll do is you can flip between the scenes just like a professional uh, studio producer would have to do and you, you can preset all these scenes up so now I've got a scene obviously which is a web page and this is actually interactive it's just the web page so you can scroll up and down it and that's actually the registration for global content which you should come to by the way because we're going to do lots of team stuff in there and then again this is my virtual camera so you can see me so if I just minimize this now and look what's happening in my in the Teams meeting is Helen's obviously sharing my screen again and my camera's now transmitting what XSplit has been configured to transmit. So you can see the web page, you can see my camera. So if I go scroll down here, in fact what we'll do, there'll be a little delay because obviously Helen's trying to, she's resharing my screen so it's going out on the internet, back on the internet and it's going around a few times so it's a little bit slow obviously. So if we scroll down here, yeah there you go. So as XSplit's changing, this is what's happening in my camera. This isn't a screen share, this is actually XSplit sharing a virtual camera. And then if I go change this, I can make this bigger. You should see in the background, that's what's happening in my virtual camera. So that's very cool because what this means is that you can now use the power of XSplit and you can configure the, ca the output of all you're doing in it as a camera to use in Microsoft Teams. And the way you do it, you might be interested, it's really easy. So once you've <coughs> installed XSplit and you go onto your Teams call, you'll get another option which is called XSplit Broadcaster. Now that's all you do effectively and then you, you might have some extra things to configure regards audio because certain things want to use the system sound like if you're playing a video 
you'll want your sound to come through and you might want to either mute yourself or not mute yourself so there is a little bit of complexity and what my suggestion here if you are using this at all get yourself a headset with a microphone because if you want to do videos and things you'll get really confused because you'll get feedback from your own sound card and you'll get confused and so always use a headset and a microphone with this <clears throat> until you get used to it that is and this could be a really good way like I say if you've got a video maybe it's on YouTube or it's a local video that you want to share <coughs> with your students and have your students watching the same second as you are this is a really cool way of doing it so that's all you do from Teams point of view side there's nothing more complicated you want to set up you keep your microphone the same uh, so if you've got a separate microphone then you'd keep you put that in there but you that's all you do is you put pick XSplit Broadcaster as the camera so normally I would pick Logitech B9 WHD webcam or I'd pick my USB live camera but I'm not going to because it, what we've told is XSplit uses that camera to do it for us so it's actually using my Logitech B9 HD webcam it's taking the feed from that and then it's doing some post-production and making another camera so it's acting like a pass-through for your camera effectively so that's it I hopefully uh, you can see from the team's point of view what's what it's like I won't show you too much more about teams because as I say the resolution is not brilliant because we're sharing back in and out so let's have a quick look at XSplit so as I mentioned you get this concept of scenes and you can set all these up before you go on a call so what I've done here is that's you have this concept of a scene and I'll just show you one from scratch actually so let's say uh, we wanted to do a bit of we wanted to share our camera so I'll pick the XSplit VCam and then maybe I want some text marks test okay, and you can set loads of options on there, I won't go through them we get the idea drag around make it different sizes etc and then because I've just set that as the scene scene 3 and you toggle between them like that if we go back to the team's meeting there you go that's being shown uh, you can like I said on the other areas you can actually overlay that's now a video playing so that's the video I've got locally on my machine and the way you configure that is you have uh, sorry they're the wrong settings there you go so the video is there so it's D Mark Docs Camtasia chat this is actually a chat jam and I've set it when you set the scene to automatically start at 14 minutes 58 which is where it was visually appealing but I can say restart it and those values basically if you click and change the scenes what it'll do is if you've configured it to it will restart the video at that particular point in time so it's a really nice way you can actually get a YouTube video starting at you know five minutes into it set your scene up and then when as soon as you on your call and you click change scene it will change your video to go to the exact second that you want and this is how you can control things is that you create you effectively create your scenes some of the other things you can do which uh, it's a bit hard for me to demo but you could actually you can bring in other streams so there's loads of applications out there that allow you to push out streams so that so effectively I could push out a stream that's streaming to Facebook and I'm pretty sure there's a way to take a Facebook live and bring this into a stream and then likewise actually while I'm on that one of the powerful bits about YouTube is that you can stream to places like Facebook YouTube uh, or a custom RTMP feed so you can go, well, I think LinkedIn you can do nowadays. So effectively, at the same time I was on my call sharing my camera with people in my company, if I wanted to, for whatever reason, I could also stream it live to YouTube or I could stream it live to Facebook. So maybe you've got a Facebook group and you could, all you do is you put your settings in there, pre-configured. In fact, I won't do this now, but if I wanted to go live and show everybody on our Club 365 group what it's this video, it would just literally start streaming it to the video as well as me being on this call so that's a really nice thing there's another function which I don't have behind me I, I haven't got a green screen set up but what you can effectively do is you can have a green screen set up with proper lighting and then with this you just chroma key things out so I'm not sure you can do it on this one yeah so you go chroma key 
I mean, it's not going to work because I've got a wide array of colours behind me, whereas you need one standard colour. Obviously, if, you, if you're going to go green screen, you don't want a green shirt on because it's going to make you look like you've got no body, which is quite a cool effect, to be fair. But yes, so I can do chrome. It'll, make, it'll look a bit dodgy now, but I can do an eyedropper tool and I can say get rid of that. It's not really going to show much there for me. Uh, let's try... Yeah, you can just get it's because I've got so many different colours behind there. You get well, what you do, you get the idea. If I'd got a complete green sheet behind me, I could chroma key out the green sheet and then I could put a new background behind me and then it'd be really cool. Which is what this tool's doing anyway, pretty much. But if you wanted to create some kind of scene and effect, that's a really nice way of doing it. Uh, so that's all cool. What other things you can bring in. You can obviously, uh, you can capture the screens just like you can with Teams and you can capture remote things so you can see all the applications I've got on here. I can capture a particular <coughs> app. I mean you can do that mostly in Teams anyway. Uh, you can obviously bring in different audio sources if you like. Uh, you can obviously do web pages. So to add a web page is dead simple. I think I've still got the area. Great. And then this is all layers as well, that's a good thing to show you. So these are all layers, but so because that one's at the top, it's appearing over the camera. And so to move it down, you do that and it's now gone behind. You can also drag it around and move things around. Obviously if you had more time you'd make it look much better. Uh so what else is there? Like I've mentioned streams, uh, general widgets. Yo, you can bring. Oh, that's a good one as well. So, for example, if you've got Skype, if you've got people on a Skype call, uh, and you want to bring those in, maybe they can't get a Teams for whatever reason, and you just want to bring somebody in Skype, you can actually add a Skype widget, put the, uh, your username, your uh, Skype ID in there, and then you can connect to people, and then bring those people into the call, and then imagine you've got somebody. I could probably show you this if you'd like to see it. Uh, if I can get somebody to come on Skype with me probably something for another video but effectively if I'd got somebody on my call one of my friends and I wanted to bring them into this video you'd see a picture of them in the Skype and it would just be like sharing Skype within Teams and obviously you'd just see the blue because I'm not in a call but that would show up in Teams you'd have your friend on Skype in your Teams call and if you choose to show the audio as well which is the system sound that would come through just like your own voice through your own mic so that's XSplit. If you want to find out more about it, it is really quite cheap. Because I say it's aimed at uh, youngsters, so they've really kept the price well. It's, it's as good as other stuff where you pay a few thousand quid for it. So if we go to XSplit, 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 there you go, it's XSplit.com, uh, products. I don't know how you get the price to be fair. I've been subscribed for so long. I pay, I think I pay uh, once a year. Uh, upgrade. Oh, anyway, I'll let you find the price. By t oh, you go, oh you, here it is, look. So it's 199 lifetime license, which is pretty good. Yeah, so that's quite cool. Yeah, it's 100, it looks like it's $199 for a lifetime, which I think is actually cheaper than I paid. So that's it. So if you have a need to do cool things in your team's meetings and you want to get a bit more flash with it, or if you want me to show you more of this, I'm, I do have my green screen that's outside packed up in my garage and it's been there for a while. I could go and bring it out. It's just a bit of a pain because my room's not really big enough. But I could actually go and get the green screen out and I'll set the lighting up if you'd like me to show you that effect. But I'm kind of hoping that you understand what you can do with green screen. That's all from me. I hope that's not been too complicated. I may have made it more complicated than it probably needed to be simply because I'm having to do a, show you a Teams meeting in a Teams meeting at the same time as Reed trying to record everything. So it's one of those things that's possibly better done with two people because then I can get them to do that side of things and I can record their screen. But I hope you're, kind of, you're with me there. So that's effectively what my camera's showing in there just to reiterate. Uh, that's all from me. If any questions whatsoever, just give us a, give us a shout, and I hope that's useful for you. Bye.